four, three, two, and one. We should definitely be live. My only thing is, y'all, I'm sorry if you saw me earlier, but <laughs> I'm having so many technical issues, which is the reason for a little bit of the delay. I've already started making some stuff, and um, I guess my camera or something cut off because I was in the middle of, like, whipping the eggs, and then all of a sudden, like, it just stopped on me. So I said all I had to say, good morning again. It's good to see y'all and all of that good stuff. Let's go ahead and get this started. So you see that at the top of the screen, I have a little bit of a uh, something going on there, but I don't want to mess anything up. So I'm just going to relax it out and just keep it moving. So this morning, y'all, we are making some cupcakes. All right. Um, as I have in the past, I went ahead and dropped the ingredients of everything below. If you are live and you're watching me, I just want to say thank you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Got a little technology going on over here to the side, so you probably can hear some things happening. So, just trying to move some things up there. Okay, all right. So, let's go ahead and get it started. So, in here, I have already put in my um, eggs and then also the vanilla. The next thing that I'm adding right now is my butter. Now this butter is softened. So this is three fourth cup of softened butter. And I tried to soften it by just kind of putting it over on the stove. So I might have some trouble with this one because it's not quite as soft as I want it to be. And y'all, I put my butter in the deep freezer. And I just got it out this morning. So actually, luckily, I was having some, I think, technical issues. And then that kind of brought me some time to have the butter to soften a little bit. So it worked out. My next thing that I'm going to go ahead and add is my heavy cream. This is three-fourths cup of my heavy cream here that I'm just going to whip right there. Pour it, excuse me. I don't know why I said whip. And then my next wet ingredient is actually my water. So this is three, one fourth, excuse me, cup of water. And then I'm just gonna mix everything together. Move this right here. Make sure I have it going on. Oops. I'm getting all the butter together here because I told you it wasn't as soft as it should have been. So I'm going to let that do its thing. So I scared me a little bit at first. I was like, what's going on? All right, let's put this here to the side. And then I'm just going to slowly just kind of mix and pour in my dry ingredients. So this is actually two cups of sugar. So I'm just going to slowly pour this. Put a little bit of that in there. And then I'm just going to mix that in with it. If at all possible, sift in your dry ingredients. I have a sift, but at this point in time, I cannot locate it. So I got to go with what I got to go with, okay? So I'm probably going to mix it a little bit longer because having a little bit of time to, to really, like, mix in that ingredient is really going to um, make my cake nice and um, unlumpy. It won't have as many lumps. So this is just the rest of my sugar that I'm adding in here, two cups. Looking good, looking good. I'm just going to go ahead and start adding in, of course, my flour. I 
put it into it. I'm hoping I'm having a really good week this week. Happy Saturday. Happy game day weekend. I'm going to also add in my um, salt and then also my baking soda. My mixer is on the lowest it can possibly go, so it's not very high. And what I'm doing now is just making sure that all of my ingredients are from around the bowl. I'm also going to go ahead and taste this because guess what? You know, if your batter, oops, if your batter is not tasting right, y'all, come on now. You got to make sure. Sweet. It tastes a little of the egg. Probably not the best thing. But it tastes really good. All the flavors taste really good together. I'm very satisfied with the taste. Listen, I'm one of the people that if you don't like the taste of your batter, switch up the ingredients. Because I promise you, if the batter, if you feel like it tastes a certain way, when you get it out the um, oven and it's done, I feel like you're still not going to be satisfied. I'm not satisfied whenever that happens. So that's why if my batter don't taste right, if I need to add a little bit more sugar, a little bit more flour, I don't care what the ingredients is, right? Sometimes you just have to know your own taste buds. And as you continue to cook, you'll become more confident. Because at first, I was all about like following the exact ingredient. Then I would sometimes get whatever it is that I baked or cooked. Then I'm like, okay, well, I think it needs a little bit more flavor. It needs a little bit more sugar, you know? And <laughs> if you ask anybody in my family, like, if you think it needs more sugar, baby, add more sugar. So if you think you need more sugar, honey, add more sugar. All right. So now that my batter is essentially, I feel like it's good to go. I'm going to lean it over so you can see it, right? I feel like it's definitely good to go. I'm going to go ahead and butter my um, cook, cupcake tin. I'm going to need this. I'm going to go ahead and butter my cupcake tin and put this here to the side. Now, I don't know what y'all use in order to butter your cupcake tins or you butter your pans, but I actually like to use sometimes these coffee filters, and then I will dip it in the butter, and then I will put it all around my tin. Okay. And I just have a little butter over here on the side, on the stove that I've been using. And I'm just kind of letting it melt, so that's kind of where I got this from, so... All I'm doing is buttering the base of it. So my cupcakes will turn out to be really, really good. Okay. 
And the purpose of this is so that it's just easy for, you know, my batter to come right out. Um, who y'all going for in the game? I definitely want to know that. Um, I told y'all already I'm watching for the halftime performance. Shout out to Mary J. Blige. Um, you know what's interesting is all of these years that Mary has, you know, been in the game, been in the industry. This is the first time I believe that I've seen her perform at the Super Bowl. Right? It, ain't that crazy? Because Mary is like a classic. I'm looking for my Pam. Y'all know I get a little distracted when I talk at the same time, but put a little Pam in here, just let you know, a little spray at the bottom. And then I have my little um, ice cream scoop because I like to use this to measure for many of my baking um, in my baking recipes. So that is one scoop. I think maybe two scoops is good. Ooh, two scoops might be a lot. Yeah, it's not bad. We'll do two scoops. Okay. So I'm doing two scoops in each one. I'm trying to be almost exact. Um, what also is gonna make this um a little better for me by butter in the bottom is that I don't have any of those little cupcake um sheets that go inside of the pan that you can just pull your cupcake out and you're good to go. So these are just gonna have to be the way that they are, but I want them to come out really nice. And I'm going to show y'all over on my Instagram when they come out what they look like so you can see. Again, my apologies, y'all, about the late start. Technology was not on my toys today. I think the universe was like, girl, relax, slow down. You know, sometimes you just got to relax and slow down and, you know, get back into the swing of life. And this is a 12 muffin tin, a 12 cavity muffin tin. Just about two scoops in each one. What I also love about this batter is that it's not um, cakey. It's also not runny. I'm not a fan of like super runny batter, you know? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven. I already have Excuse me, my oven preheated at 350 degrees, and then I'll come back and I'll get some game day stuff ready with y'all. So I'm going to leave these in here. I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes. But as you know, I try to definitely check on these um, just kind of throughout, you know, my time doing. All right, so 20 minutes here. I'm gonna put this here to the side. Okay, coming back around because I'm going to put some of my um, other stuff up so that I can get started on some game day stuff. Now, I probably have at least one more batch for those um, cupcakes. So I guess it makes probably about like um, two, two batches of the 12, probably. wiping this here off. All this flour got everywhere, y'all. And I know that I miss showing y'all like the first um, beginning of like the vanilla and then also the eggs, but my, um, everything cut off on me. I don't know what happened. So I just kind of went with it, okay? Sometimes you just got to go with it. So the next thing I need to do is get my cheese together because uh, one of the things on the menu is actually going to be some uh, dip. So I'm going to be having some queso dip, 
um, for tomorrow so that I can watch the halftime show. Notice I keep saying the halftime show. So I grabbed some Velveeta. I'm only going to um, do this in half, so I'm just going to start off by um, slicing up my Velveeta cheese. Y'all, I have not had, I can't even remember the last time I actually had like some queso dip. Um, this is something that I probably had growing up. Um, I, don't, I can't remember how often, but my mom definitely made this. We just didn't make it all the time. But it was one of those things I always saw at like potlucks or, um, you know, Something like that. Everybody brings something or whatever the case may be. Like, I always saw them at, like, things like that. And one of the reasons why, I got to tell you this. I never thought that I would be, like, a big baker person. But I have to admit to you that I don't, I used to didn't get a sweet tooth often. And when I got a sweet tooth, um, I would just, like, run to the store and grab something, right? Because I didn't get sweet tooth often. But what would happen is they would dress up these very beautiful, gorgeous pastries. Make them look nice and pretty and beautiful. And then I would taste them and I'd be like, this is so disappointing. It looks so good, but it tastes not as good as it looks. So, you know, that's that's one of the things I think about pastries is you really got to find a good spot that has really good pastries. Not every place has that, but I think a lot of the, like, chain grocery stores, don't be mad at me, grocery stores, but... I think y'all have some generic ways of making some of the, um, not all of them, but just some of your bakery items. And it's, you know, the presentation is beautiful, but the taste is just not as beautiful as the presentation. And, you know, I guess that's what, that's how you sometimes sell stuff, but that's not how you keep your customers. Okay. So a lot of times when you make it at home, it's just not as, um, you're just excited about it. That's why I say taste your batter. Taste, don't eat your batter. Just taste it, okay? Just like, boom, taste it. That's it. So right now, I'm just kind of cutting up the cheese because I'm going to put it in my crock pot. I am not cooking this on the stove because I don't know about y'all, but I hate to have cheese stuck in my pot. It's the worst. I mean, I'm sure that there's hacks and everything, but I just don't like to have that in my pots at all. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of cutting up the cheese. I'm using the wrapper of the Velveeta to just kind of keep the cheese on top of it and use it as kind of like a surface so I can cut up my cheese. And then I'm going to grab my crock pot here that I have to the side. And I'm going to put my cheese inside of the crock pot. All right. Um, in addition to that, I'm also going to cut up a few fresh tomatoes so I can also put in the dip. I just feel like it gives it a little extra flavor. Um, this is not going to be done until tomorrow, so I'm actually going to put some plastic over this, put it in the fridge. I still need to actually do my ground beef, which I will do tomorrow morning. Then I will put it in here, and then I'll put it in the crock pot, let it stay in the crock pot for probably about like maybe a couple of hours on really low 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 and should be good to good to go you know add the rest of the ingredients pretty simple this is not my recipe i got this recipe from i want to say like the back of the box but i couldn't find it on the back of the box this time um they have so many other recipes in here though they have macaroni they got some other stuff that you can actually make but i'm always that person that says like i know we can google everything but sometimes you know they have good recipes right on the boxes of whatever it is that we purchased in so let me put this to the side also, just so you know, this is not sponsored. This is not a paid ad or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my plastic and put this on top. Oh, no, I got to use the fresh tomatoes. My bad. I almost forgot. I actually have some. Let me do a couple of more other fresh ingredients, too, that I have. And I'm just doing it with the same knife I did the cheese with. I'm trying to think of how I want to cut this. I want to kind of cube it up. So I'm going to cut them kind of like this. I'm just using my cheese knife because 
in my opinion, it's not even a big deal. It doesn't even matter. It's all going in the same place. Okay, so... Each one of them, I'm just going to just kind of dice it up a little bit here. And the good thing is all I got to do when I wake up is put this on, even without the ground meat if I want to, and make the ground meat the last thing that I put in because I'm already doing the ground meat on the stove. So you know how it goes. Sometimes you just got to do it that way. Again, if you're just joining me, happy Saturday, y'all. Happy game day weekend. I hope that y'all are enjoying. I hope your team made it. If they didn't, maybe next year. Hope you enjoyed the halftime show. I'm looking forward to boom, 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 Shout out to Mary J. Okay, I'm putting this stuff here. To the side, because I don't think I need this just yet. Now I'm going to put my plastic on top of this, then I'm going to put it in the fridge. Okay, I wanted to pull this out. I love to, I don't know if I told you, just kind of like pre-prep stuff. Just because it makes me look forward to it more. I'm more likely to get excited, to follow through, to not procrastinate, to not go grab anything. It's really just one of those. I noticed that my lighting was a little off, so I'm just trying to see if what I just did right there will fix that lighting just a little bit. And I think it actually kind of does. In addition to that, I'm also, um, I have some leftover rotisserie. And so I'm going to pull the rotisserie, the meat, the little bit of meat that I have left over. And then also I'm going to use this for some chicken broth. Because I don't know if I told y'all, but when I get my rotisserie, I typically um, use it for, you know, some chicken broth for later, you know? I think it's also a good way for you to just kind of um, preserve as much as you possibly can. Kill two birds with one stone. I already use that anyway. I already have the rotisserie anyway, so why not take the flavor from the chicken and also use it too? Just grabbing a little bowl here. And the reason why I got my gloves is because this can be, you know, I don't want it to get all up in my fingernails. But I also cut myself um, earlier in the week, y'all. It was on my coffee press. It's like, what in the world? But yeah, um, I broke my coffee press, or should I say the um, glass on the coffee press was cracked. So yeah. Now some of the skin I'm actually not gonna keep. I'm gonna put it in here and I could use that to go into the flavor of my chicken broth, but I'm not gonna put that in here for my pulled anything. But I'm gonna use this chicken for a dip as well. So there's like a chicken buffalo Dip, I'm going to use it for that. It's not that much chicken in here, so I may have to actually um, make a chicken breast so I can use that. But it looks like I use this all week for dinner or a couple of dinners, maybe a lunch. I hope y'all had a beautiful, productive week. I'm just you know, not much going on this weekend. Yes, it's a game day weekend, but I'm not watching the game as much as I'm just 
preparing to watch the halftime show. Everything else is just kind of, um, you know, it's a part of it. My family is a football house. I have to say that. So growing up as a kid, anyway, my family was a football house. So um, I have three uncles and they're all into, two of them definitely are into, you know, sports like that. So I have to say uh, basketball, football, those are definitely some of the top sports in my family. But I think, honestly, they like it all. So this is about as much it looks like of it. Okay, I got a little bit more here. Go ahead and get as much off as I possibly can. What kind of music do y'all listen to when you are in the kitchen and you're preparing, you know? It depends on what mood I'm in. I really do like to listen to um, jazz a lot, even in my car, actually driving. It just kind of relaxes me, makes everything feel like smooth, you know? And I listen to smooth jazz as well, but I also listen to regular jazz too. So it's not just the other one. Okay. So I think I got about as much as this is possible as I was going to get off. All right, just taking all of this, boom. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my pot and prepare for my chicken broth, okay? You take off the gloves. And this is a really big pot, but I'm actually gonna take this pot um, and I'm going to dump in the remains of my chicken bone and also some of the um, skin as well that was on the outside that I didn't want to put into my chicken dip, my chicken buffalo wing dip that we do tomorrow. And in order for me to just kind of get all of the remains like at the bottom, because all of those juices and everything are there, they're flowing, I just put a little bit of water in there a couple of times here. I can take that part off. Did you see all that juice in there? It's still a little bit more. So I'm going to take a little bit more water, put it inside, go around. I want to grab as much of that flavor from around that container as I possibly can. There's also a string on here. Don't forget to get that off. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> You want to take that out, but if you do happen to boil it, which I have before, you'll see it. It'll come out into the um, into the boil. So I'm going to add a little bit more water, and then I'm going to turn my stove top on, probably about medium, so that this can start to boil, and I'll have some chicken broth later on. While I'm over here on the side, I'm also going to just take a little bit of a dip and look at my cupcakes. I'm just going to turn my light on on my oven just to see what they look like. Okay, I think they are looking good. I am going to start cleaning up a little bit. You can hear I got a little bit of water on the top of my eye. And then now I can prepare for the cupcakes to come out. If you are just joining me, I just want to tell you happy Saturday. Hope that your Saturday is going well. It's a game day weekend. It's also Valentine's weekend. I forgot to actually state that. I don't know why I forgot that part. But yes, it is also Valentine's weekend. Let me show y'all some of the very cute um, decorations that I have. Now, some of these cupcakes are going to be like kind of game day themed cupcakes. That chocolate icing frosting that I made last weekend. I have a little bit left over, so I'm going to put a little bit on, of that kind of like on the top. Um and make it just look very nice and festive. Then I also have some toppings for Valentine's Day. Let me show you. So 
So, y'all, these are just some cute little pink sprinkles that is going to be perfect for the top. And then I have also some more, like, pink sugar pearls that also can go straight on the top of the cake. So I can make some white frosting, and then that white frosting, um, after that, I'll put these right on top, and it'll go with my nice, beautiful cupcakes that I have. So put this here to the side. So my time wish is that I have about two more minutes, but as I'm looking there, it looks like I probably need about at least maybe five to, you know, 10 more minutes of getting some stuff done. So while that is happening, I should probably go ahead and make sure that my ground beef is out, that I have everything that I need, um, and that everything is prepped for tomorrow. So stay with me, darling. Oh, this one. I'm also going to do a little bit of a troubleshooting here. See if I can fix something. Okay, so now that I'm back, um, and I think I've kind of fixed some stuff that's kind of like disappeared there a little bit. Yeah. All right, if y'all have anything to say, please be sure to like drop it down in the chat box. As I said before, you can find the ingredients. It is below, it is actually linked below. And while this is getting done, I'll actually make some frosting as well. So today I'm actually going to make it with milk instead as well as my confectioner sugar. So I don't need too much today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this just a little bit. I'm going to shake it up. It is canned milk. And you can use either canned milk or you can use just a jug of milk if you want to. But all you need to make um, some icing to go on top is really some confectioner sugar and some milk. And I really do want to make one this time where it's not a whole lot of, um, I'm more, this is more icing, not necessarily, you know, frosting. Okay, so this is my bowl. Let me wipe this off real quick. Just joining me, I'm just getting my bowl ready so that I can create my frosting. While the cupcakes get done. You know, I have to do this anyway. So it's like if my time allows me to do it, I'm like, I'll go ahead and make it happen. This is my confection of sugar here, but I also have like this big container here that I can use. So I'm gonna grab my whip. Rinse it off. Now that I have rinsed and wiped this off, I'm going to make a little bit of icing to go over my vanilla cupcakes. 
And you know what's so funny is someone told me that, showed me and told me that when they get their cupcakes from the uh, grocery store, what they'll do is they'll like almost like cut it in half and then like put like the icing on top of the other one so that it's almost kind of like the icing is in the middle and it's almost like a sandwich-ish kind of a cupcake thing, you know? So remember, I'm kind of eyeing this a little bit. I'm going to start off. I'm going to put in some of this first. And then I'll whip in some of the confectioner sugar. I don't need too much. So that's why I'm not overly measuring it. Yes, once again, I'm doing this in front of y'all. I know. It's kind of like, girl, you risking it. You taking a chance. But this is how I do stuff in the kitchen. I really do honestly experiment. That's why I don't get too, um, I think, intimidated in the kitchen. Because I do not mind experimenting. And right now, you can see that my milk and my confection of sugar is coming together very well. I'm starting to get that very smooth look. I'm going to pour in a little bit more of my confection of sugar. You can also add a little bit of vanilla if you want as well. I am all out of vanilla now. So I don't have any more left, so I'm not going to be able to add that in there. But essentially, this is just a little bit of milk confection of sugar. And I'm going to use this as my glaze icing to go on top of my cupcakes. I love the fact that it has like that little off-white look. That is one of the things about when you make it with the canned milk. I feel like it really does give that look to it. I am going to taste it, make sure I like it. If I don't, make some adjustments. I think a little bit more powdered sugar will be good. Not too much pressure, just a little bit more. Then I can smell my cupcakes over there doing its thing. And I'll go ahead and prepare to take them out. Ooh. All right. They have a cake look to them. They dipped on me just a little bit. But there we go. These are our cupcakes, y'all. They are ready. Vanilla cupcakes, to be more specific. The recipe is down in my description box below. I'm going to go ahead and, like, pop these out, see what they look like. Okay, so they are very warm. Remember, don't do this while it's warm. I just want to show y'all what they look like. That's the only reason why I'm trying to do it while it's hot. Do it while it's hot. Do it while it's Do it while it's Do it while it's hot. Okay, hopefully they will come up. Maybe I put enough butter in here. Maybe I did not. Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, it's coming out there just a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, okay, very hot. Very hot, but this is the cupcake here that we have. See what our center looks like. I just want to taste it a little bit because I got to see what it tastes like. Mmm, 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 It's going to be even better with the glaze. Don't do this while it's hot for y'all to taste so good right now. Remember, 20 minutes, 350. That's about all you need. Take them out. Let them sit on the stove for a little while. And then you have your cupcakes, y'all. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to head over to Instagram for just a little while. Just to kind of show the result of everything I have. Thank y'all for being with me. Thank you for your patience today. While technology was just, you know, I say all over the place. But, you know, it was trying to work with me. And it ended up working with me. So thank y'all so much for joining me. Good morning. Happy Saturday. And be sure to join me next time. 
when I will be making something else as it relates to the month of February. Happy Love Month. Happy Black History Month. Have a great Saturday.